Hi everyone, this is Mark, and today we're going to show you how to use our CNC router. In the last video, we used Fusion 360 to generate our G-code. And in this video, we're going to show you how to set up the machine and then use that G-code to actually cut your part out. So first off, we're going to do a quick overview of the machine. The Shea Poco is a CNC router, which means that it's a three-axis CNC mill. It has an X-axis, a Y-axis, and a Z-axis. The X axis on the machine, if you stand in front of it, is going to be left and right. The Y axis will be forwards and backwards. And the Z axis will be up and down on the spindle. Now the spindle itself contains a motor that's going to spin our rotating tool. And the very bottom of the spindle has something called an ER collet. And this is a clamping system that then holds on to our tools. We're going to show you how to use the collet system to hold on to various size tools later in the video. But I just want you to know what that is. Now, this tube right here is our, gonna be our dust extraction system. We have a vacuum underneath the table that's gonna suck up all the dust and chips you create to try to keep the environment clean as well as you safe. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is turn on the machine and initialize it. Initializing a machine means that the machine is gonna touch off and home itself so it knows where everything is. So turn on the machine, we're gonna click this button in the front here and it's gonna turn blue. After that, we're gonna go to the computer which then controls the machine and click connect to cutter. Now after the computer has been connected to the cutter, we're gonna click initialize machine. And that's gonna home our machine, it's gonna move around and go to the top right corner. Once it stops moving and there's no error messages, it's done and it's gonna be ready to go. Now next step is we're gonna secure our workpiece set table. One of the hardest things to do is actually securing your workpiece in a way that is gonna be bridge enough for the machine to cut as well as convenient enough for you to do in a reasonable amount of time. Now these CNC routers have a couple different options to help you out with that. One is that we got wooden slats. These wooden slats can be screwed into with wood screws. They can also be cut into as you can see a lot of folks have been doing that right now. We also have these aluminum extrusions in the machine. These are T-slots so you can put a nut and screw in them and then use a clamp or some kind of fixturing device. You can also double side tape or glue stuff down. Uh, we generally recommend you do that with a additional piece of wood on top because these slats get cut into, so they're often not flat or square anymore. So that's actually where we're going to stay for our project. We're going to take this piece of plywood, we're going to clamp it down to the table of the router, and then we're going to use double side tape to hold our actual workpiece onto this piece of wood. Now, because of that, this piece of wood is going to be sacrificial, so we're going to cut slightly into it, and that's perfectly fine for our application. Generally, whatever material you want to use as sacrificial, you want it to be softer than the material you're working with, so a tool can cut into it as well as your material. Yeah, there are a bunch of different ways to fixture things. A bunch of people do things differently. Uh, it's really up to you as the user to decide how you want to do it. If you're ever unsure how to hold down your workpiece, talk to a staff member and we can give you some guidance on the best way to do that. So now let's get started with bolting out our workpiece. So with these clamps, you're going to use a screw and a T-nut. You slide the whole assembly into the T-slot extrusion. Make sure you put the lip up the edge on the material and then you're going to tighten the screw. They don't need to be super torqued down, but you want to make sure they're pretty tight. And now we're going to do that to all four corners of this piece of material. Generally speaking, four clamps is the best way to go. Sometimes you can get away with less clamps if your part is smaller or you're using a small tool. Now, these clamps are also plastic, so that means if you hit them with a tool, it's not going to be a catastrophic failure. However, you still do want to plan ahead and make sure you have enough excess material you can make your part without ever hitting the clamps or any other fixturing equipment you may be using. Now, once we have tightened all four clamps, we're going to go ahead and apply our double side tape to our actual material. You want as much coverage as possible without overlapping the tape. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply two lines. So we're going to do the first one, cut it and then apply a second line of tape, and then again, use the razor blade and cutting mat to cut it to size. It's really important to make sure that the tape stays as flat as possible so it doesn't cause your part to sit at an angle. So you're gonna to wanna to take your time to do this correctly. After we're done cutting away to excess, we're going to have our part ready stick onto the material. Now, this would be some really nice peeling ASMR, but we didn't record any audio for this, so you get to hear my voice instead. 
Once you're ready to stick your part to the table, you want to make sure it is as square as possible to the x-axis of the machine. And then as you clamp it down, you want to make sure you push down on it for about 20 seconds to let the tape settle. If this was a larger job, I sometimes will put weight on it and give it a few minutes. But for this, it should be enough just to use our hands. Now we have secured our workpiece of the machine. We're going to be able to go through our machine setup now. So how you move the spindle around is you click the jog button on the computer screen and this brings up the jogging mode, which allows you to move the machine around manually. Now, in this mode, you can go incrementally or you can have it just jog. So incrementally, that means that every time you click the button, it's gonna move the amount as shown on the screen. Now, if we go click the increment plus button, we can go up into fast mode, which means that the machine will move as long as we hold down the button. So if I hold down X negative, it's gonna move to the left, for example. As you can see. Okay, so now we have positioned the machine a little closer to so We're gonna be able to install the tool. Now the tool we programmed in Fusion 360 was our six millimeter end mill, which we're gonna use right here. This is a straight flute end mill, so it has two straight flutes. This is a great general purpose cutting tool for all kinds of woods, including plywood, MDF, and other types. So we like to use this for a lot of basic operations. So now we're gonna go ahead and install it into our collet. So the first thing we're gonna do is unscrew the collet nut by hand from the spindle. After that, we're going to take our ER collet and click it in. And then we're going to screw it back onto the spindle one or two threads only. You want to be careful not to drop this, <clears throat> Emily. Once we have it screwed on, we're going to be able to slide the tool in. The tool does not go in where it is a very loose fit. You have probably used the wrong collet and you're going to want to double check your work here. After that, we're going to push the tool all the way up so that the tool is as high as it goes before it hits the cutting flutes. We're going to want to fully tighten that by hand and then use the wrenches to actually torque it down. You want a reasonable amount of torque, but you don't need to go too crazy over here. Feel free to ask for help for your first time so you can get a feel for this. You want to always be sure you do actually tighten this down because if you do not, there's a good chance the tool will come out. Okay, once we have our tool in the machine and torque down, we're going to be able to set our X, Y, and Z zero. So CNC machines operate on the uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So making sure X, Y, Z zero is correct is super important, especially the Z zero. Because if the Z zero is wrong, the machine could crash the spindle into your workpiece, which could cause damage to the machine as well as scrapping your part. You also want to remember where we set the zero in our CAM program. If you recall, we used the bottom left corner. So that means we're going to have the zero to the bottom left corner of our workpiece. This is really important to get right, so we want you to double check your work when you're ever doing this. And if you're ever not sure, please go back and check your CAM program or ask the staff member help. But once I have the tool in the machine, I'm going to use the jog position screen here to move the tool to where my zero is. So you have a visual reference as well as being able to set the zero directly that way. So now we're going to jog the machine to the tool is where we want our X, Y, zero B, which is going to be the bottom left corner of our stock. So you're going to want to try to get the coordinate exactly where the center of the tool is, because remember, everything's built around the center of the tool. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, because we do have some allowance in the material size that we cut oversized, so that absorbs any error we have. So it doesn't have to be microscopically perfect, but you probably want it within at least of a sixteenth of an inch. Now, once you're happy with the tool position, you're gonna be able to hit the set zero button and click X and Y zero, and then hit done. This will then set the zero, and then on the position screen to your left here, it'll say X zero and Y zero. And you wanna make sure that took, so that that zero is where the machine is, and that is where your part is. And once we're done with that, we're gonna be able to do our Z zero. Now, for the Z zero, we're gonna to wanna to jog the machine to the middle of our stock, and now we're going to use the incremental mode to slowly bring down the tool and set it with a piece of paper. You're going to move the piece of paper until the tool catches the paper. And that's how you know you're on the top surface of your part. The piece of paper protects the tool from damaging your part as well as your part damaging the tool. So that's why we use a little piece of paper in between. And the thickness of the paper is so small we don't really have to worry about it when accounting for our zero. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And then when we're doing that, we generally use the smallest increment setting, which is going to be 0 0.025 millimeters. So as you can see, I'm wiggling the paper as I increment the tool down. As soon as the tool catches, I'm going to stop and then set my zero in the computer.
After that, I'm going to lift the tool up and then we're going to be able to run the program. Okay, so now we have zeroed our machine. We have set up the stock and then we also put the dust cover back on. We're going to be ready to load in our G-code and run the program. So we have a checklist by all of our CNC router machines. Before you get any farther, you're going to want to go through, read it, and double check if you've done all the steps. If any of the steps seem confusing or if you're unsure about it, take a second to think about it. And if you have any issues, talk to the staff member we can square you away. So once we're done with the setup, we're going to be able to go in here and hit run. And then we're going to be able to load our GCO file off of our flash drive. So once we're ready to go, we can hit load new file. And we're going to want to pull off the uh, GCO file off of our flash drive. Now, when a machine loads up the GCO, it's going to give you a couple of uh, parameters. It's going to tell you the size of your program and how deep the program is going to be cutting. You want to make sure you have enough tools sticking out so that you can cut the full depth of your program without hitting the spindle. And then you also want to make sure you have enough spoil board so that the tool doesn't go hit any metal parts of the machine. As you remember, when we set this up, we put the material on a big block of plywood. So we're going to have plenty of material to cut into, so I'm not concerned. It's also going to tell you how long the cutting time is going to take. You want to make sure you have enough time to sit here and watch the entire cutting process, as you have to be present in case anything goes wrong. Sure. Up on the top here, we can also hit top view, and it's going to show us a graphical representation of our G-code, and we all make sure this looks correct. It's also going to show with the blue lines where the origin is. And again, we want to make sure that we zero the machine in the same spot where our G code thinks our origin is because those things have to line up for our part to be cut correctly. So now we're about to ready to run the program. We again want to double check everything. So we got our stock secure. We got the right tool in the machine and we're happy with our XYZ zero and we got our program loaded in. We're going to be able to run. We hit start job and she automatically turn on the spindle as well as the vacuum system. For every reason, if the spindle doesn't spin up, you want to be sure you're ready to hit stop right away so that it avoids the tool colliding with the material. Once you hit start jobs, you're going to bring it into our run job screen. We're going to go ahead and hit start here. And then you want to be ready to hit pause or stop if anything goes wrong. It's going to ask us to uh, insert the tool. Uh, we've already done that, so we just hit resume. And there you go, it's going to start cutting. Okay, so the machine cut our part out successfully and it looks fantastic. It made a bit of a mess because we didn't have the dust collector all the way down, which would have helped. We wanted to have it up a little higher so we can show the cutting on camera. When you're cutting your part, you're probably gonna to wanna to lower it. But once we're done cutting, we wanna make sure we brush away the chips and then we're gonna pry our part off. Remember, we use double-sided tape, so the best way to get this off is a combination of twisting and prying. So I'm gonna try twisting it by hand. And if that doesn't, if that doesn't work, we're gonna get our flathead screwdriver. So that's stuck on there pretty good. So we're just gonna use, use the flathead screwdriver. There we go. And it'll come right off. And there you go, there's our part. So congratulations, you have made your first part. After you're done, you're gonna wanna vacuum up your work area. You're gonna put away all the clamps. Take a tool off and put it where you got it from. Uh, we have some tool chests where all the stuff goes back into. But generally speaking, if you don't know where something goes, please talk to a staff member or we can help you. Hope you learned something and have a good day.
Emily. What? Why don't you do whole side up? <laughs> well, <laughs> Emma, you didn't catch it either until it was too late. Can we take it off?